Hello and welcome to this edition of Greatest Somerville. I'm Joe Lynch. It is my extreme pleasure to welcome to Greatest Somerville for her first appearance with me, but she is very well known in the city of Somerville, the new director of, lib of the library, Kathy Pien <laughs> Genie. Good job. Can I say it again? <laughs> you did Kathy great. Kathy Piantingini. It trips me up because I have a niece whose maiden name is Piazzantini. Mm -hmm. Oh. And I always say it incorrectly when yeah. I'm referring to you. But let's not talk about my my it's way fine. of doing it. This is Kathy <laughs> Pian Piantagini. Piantagini. Mm -hmm. Perfect. See, I said it perfectly before we great. started taping. Don't worry, I do this stuff all the time, and it's it's a tricky last name. All right, name, so, so can I call you Madam Director now? Well, yes, but you can also just call me Kathy. Kathy. <laughs> so there isn't a person in Somerville who doesn't know who you are. Mm. And I think the uh, following the Facebook post when it was announced that you are new, the new director mm. for the library in the city of Somerville, mm -hmm. I followed all of those oh. those remarks. People were overjoyed for you. And the reason is you are Somerville. Mm -hmm. You are 25 years with the Somerville Public Library mm -hmm. system. And now you wear the crown. I know. Good for you. Thank you. Good I really you. appreciate that. It was overwhelming to see a lot of the, um, the comments. And uh, I was really touched and overwhelmed. And it was actually a way for me to reflect and um, really think about a lot of the patrons and the library staff that I've worked with over the years. And, you know, as I had said, some of them are dear friends to me now that right. I met so long ago. So, yeah. Well, let's start, you know, let people know um, a little bit about the background and how you started in library services, and then we'll do a fast forward. Yeah, I love and Maybe that. we'll talk about the history of the library system here in the yeah. city and what's to come in the future. I love all of that. Um, so I started in 1993. It was at the East Branch Library, and I was hired to be the children's librarian there. So at the time, and it's still the case today, um, the children's librarians at the branches, they needed a bachelor's degree, but not a library science degree. Mm -hmm. And I had just come out of Fitchburg State with an education um, degree and knew that teaching wasn't exactly where I wanted to be, but I knew I wanted to work with youth. And so this opportunity became available and I was hired. And then I would guess about a year, year and a half in. Uh, do you know Paul DeAngelis? I do. Okay, so do. he was the library director at wow. the time. I know. And um, he sat me in his office and he asked me how much I liked the job and I told him I loved it. And he really encouraged me to go to library school. And you know, at the time I was in my early 20s and didn't have two pennies to rub together and thought, how am I gonna do that? Right, right. Um, there's one school I could go to, it was Simmons. They're the only school that offered the program. And Paul was so practical with me and he said, you have to do it. You know, you're gonna take out a loan, you're gonna get it done, and then you're gonna have your degree and that's gonna give you a lot of um, flexibility with your career. And he was absolutely right. So went to school part time for two years. Um, that was about from 95 to 97. And then during that time, as I got more experience, he would um, give me promotion. So, you know, once I was going through the program, I got a reference job up at the main library and did that for a little while. And then once I graduated, um, my first department head position was, ooh. God, now I don't know if it I can remember. It was a remember. while ago, Kat. It was. I think it was the teen librarian. It was one or the other. It was either the teen librarian or the adult services where I was buying nonfiction books for mm -hmm. adults and um, delivering materials to homebound patrons and helping out with the bookmobile. And um, in 2001, an opportunity became available to supervise the children's room at Central. And that was like a dream come true. And so got that position and was there for 15 years, working wow. right beside Anne Cassesso all that time, which was amazing. And we had such a good time together. And Anne Cassesso mm -hmm. Ercolini. That is exactly right, right. yes. Right. She know, she, uh, we, we know each other from <laughs> high school. Oh, come on. Yeah. yeah. So that was just a delight. And, um, and then the deputy director position became available in 2016, and I thought, Wow, like another amazing opportunity. And um, 
got that position, worked with Glenn. And every time I had a transition, it always was um, something I was really excited about mm -hmm. and something to look forward to. But you knew the library system itself backwards mm -hmm. and forwards. So you, you kind of had a bird's eye view of what are the positions that I can excel at? What are the positions I really want to do? Right. Pro probably more that, you know, like, um, I mean, I always knew in my heart I was drawn to youth services. But um, the longer I worked at the library, I realized, you know, I also had really great interactions with adults. And when I got the deputy's position, that actually shifted. So a lot of the public facing work mm -hmm. I was doing now was more like administrative. Right. And now it shifted from working with the public to working with the staff. So that was like a whole other new learning curve and in a great way. Like I learned a lot. Um, really good challenges, you know, felt like I could help on a slightly different level, you know, that sort of thing. And now, director. Mm. Isn't that cool? I still can't believe well, it. Well, <laughs> I can, I can, and you better believe it because great things are going to be expected yeah. of you. Great things it's have true. been, you've produced great things in the past, so great things are now expected. Yeah. So we have three public library buildings mm -hmm. in the city. Uh, we have the West Branch, the Central Branch, and the East Branch. Mm -hmm. The West Branch, unfortunately, um, my words, not Kathy's, has a little frayed around the edges, mm -hmm. but correct me if I'm wrong, I think at least two of our libraries are Carnegie libraries. I, we, they all are, actually. They all are. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the West, the Gold Star down on Broadway. That's right. And the, the uh, I'm sorry, the East on Broadway, the West down in Davis Square, and then the Central, mm -hmm. all were funded by Andrew Car mm -hmm. Carnegie Grants. That's right. Got it. Yep. Got it. And the, the West Branch, unfortunately, because it's tattered, um, and because rightfully so, the city has invested money to make it handicap accessible, mm -hmm. will be closed for a period of time. That's right. And that puts a little bit more pressure on the central and the east. It does. Yeah. We were really fortunate, though, because we actually were able to find a temporary location, a solution that will allow us to keep having library services in um, West Somerville. And that was an effort that involved um, a few different departments and actually um, organizations in Somerville. Mm -hmm. So, and where is it, Kath? Where is it going to be located? So right now, the main thrust of our services will be at TAB, so um, the Tufts Administration Building on Holland Street. Holland Street, mm -hmm. yep. And opening that's going to open this coming Monday. Terrific. Um, so we're going to have regular hours of operation Monday through Friday, and we'll be open until 8.30 p.m. twice a week, same as what we were doing at the West Branch. Mm -hmm. And um, all fully handicap accessible. It is, yep. right. So you can um, go in easily, and then there's an elevator. Um, and we're also right at the top of the stairs, so it's um, a really good location. Like, you won't really have to find us. Great. Um, you'll know exactly where we are. Great. And then the room that we're going to be using is relatively small. It's big enough, barely, to have a collection and it will allow patrons to pick up holds that they've put um, on materials from other libraries. Okay. And we'll have staff there regularly, but we can't do a lot of programming there. So the Community Baptist Church that's across the street from the West Branch mm -hmm. on College Ave, they um, are... That's the white church on the corner. No, actually, it's the one that's the smaller brick uh, building. Ah, uh, um, <clears throat> let me see if I got this right. Uh, where the old Woodbridge Hotel was. You don't remember that, but... Uh, would, is that Champa Manor? Is that yes. closer to the square? So yes. it's in between those two. In between two. those yes. two. Yep. There's a, a small church there. Right. Um, I think it's like one level. And so they have been really accommodating, and they're um, allowing us to have a story time there on Tuesday mornings. And we also have an ESL program that we run at each library. And so Champa Manor actually is going to be hosting the ESL course that we offer at the West Branch. So all the services that were offered at the West Branch are still going to be mm -hmm. offered, but just in different locations. That's right. Uh, so yeah. at the Tab Building and almost directly across the street from the old West Branch mm -hmm. is the Community Baptist Church. That's right. Yeah. Yep. Great. Yeah. How about the main library? I know there's been a lot of talk um, over the years about either upgrading or replacing or relocating mm -hmm. if 
I don't want you to say anything that, <laughs> that's going to get you in trouble, but what's the story with the main library? So, uh, well, it's amazing. It continues to function. Um, and we and do, it's a gorgeous building. It really, it is. Um, the outside of it is still just so lovely. Um, and, you know, we really have kind of outgrown the space, and that's been the case for decades now. Mm -hmm. But we do the best we can with what we have. Um, and so, as you probably know, there's a plan now to redevelop the Central Hill campus. Yes. Yep. And so, you know, all the focus right now is on the high school and building that. And then I think over the next several years, you're going to see a big transformation, not just with the high school, but with the municipal buildings that are there, too. So mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. think it's just a matter of time before right. we see some really great things, including the green space. You know, I mean, the whole, I think, I don't know what the timetable is, but let's say at minimum, um, like in the next five to 10 years, I think you're gonna, well, not even, from now over the next several years, you're gonna see big changes there, so. Well, I know you do the best you can in mm. terms of uh, putting your best foot forward and saying our facility, we love our facility, but it needs upgrading. It definitely does. So I'll does. put the plug in. Yeah. Joe Curtitoni. <laughs> The new directors come and looking I for money. I hope it happens before I retire. That's well, the goal, you go. right? Yeah, so. but you still got 25 years to retire, Matt. Kathy, come on. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> That's very nice of you. <laughs> and not forgetting our friends down at the, the uh, Gold Star Library down mm -hmm. on Broadway. Mm -hmm. Any um, upgrade plans in the future for that Definitely, one? Definitely, yes. So um, all the East Branch is also on, um, how do you want to say it, like a... A plan, a community plan, mm -hmm. basically for rehabbing facilities, and the East Branch is mentioned on that. And certainly, it's uh, in dire need of expansion. Um, so, yeah, the nice thing I can say about that is they're all—all all the libraries are being paid attention to at this point. So let's talk about you know when people talk about a library, um, you are certainly not the the what we picture as the librarian mm -hmm. you know the head librarian mm -hmm. sitting there Shh. right <laughs> because i followed you are a community partner mm -hmm. of somerville media center and i followed a lot of the programs that we do you participate mm -hmm. in somerville neighborhood news mm -hmm. you give the library updates um I always, one of these days, I'm going to get film clips of Ann uh, Cassesso Ercolini mm -hmm. when she does the reading yeah. for the kids. Oh, they're so amazing. And the one that I want to get, and I'm, I'm going to make it happen, mm -hmm. is where she does the animal voices. Yeah. And, the, and to see my former high school mm -hmm. compatriot doing quack, quack, quack. <laughs> and she has I the just, best time doing she it. She has a blast yeah. doing it. So. Yeah. Um, all of those programs, though, are going to continue in one way or another. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a whole, um, uh, I, I don't want to say uh, revitalization, but there's an ongoing evolution mm -hmm. of library services yeah. more into the digital age mm -hmm. at this point. You want to talk a little bit about that? Sure. It's no longer the place of the dusty bookshelves with gold leaf. Well, that's exactly yeah. right. And actually, even now, I think of it, too, as evolution as far as programming and really shifting um, the idea of what a public library can do for its community. So, of course, there is the idea that you want to be able to go in and get, check out library books and have um, a learning experience that can be independent. Um, but then there's also the technology part of it, which you know got ushered in um, in the 90s when we started buying computers for the public, and now that has evolved into tablets and mm -hmm. um, and allowing us to offer databases to our patrons so that you can actually still use the library even when you're not at the library, mm -hmm. you know, by using your phone or your smartphone. And you're pad. tapping into the library resources. So that's right. A lot of databases that we make available, a lot of books that you can listen to or read, um, like Consumer Reports online. If you have an account with the library, you can access that. Mm -hmm. You can watch movies. And then also rethinking uh, what we do at the library for programming and outreach for that matter. So over the last couple of years, we've had a bigger presence in the community. You know, we're offering a book group that meets at Aeronaut once a month that gets at minimum about 30 people that wow. are really engaged and really enjoy the experience. Um, 
the mobile libraries that we're offering. So we did a trial run for two weeks at Bow Market uh, this summer where we had a little storefront library there and it was wonderful. Um, we actually had patrons that came and returned library materials there, which I thought was great. And many years ago, there was a branch library in Union Square. So it's kind of rethinking what a library is in the community. <clears throat> Let me just add something here that it is not unlike what the banking industry went through, you know, maybe 20 years ago, was mm -hmm. that you can no longer be the benevolent banker, or in your mm -hmm. case, the benevolent, benevolent librarian, right. waiting for the public to well, come to you. that's exactly right. right. You have yeah. to go out to the public now. Mm -hmm. And what we try to do always is just make the library accessible for everybody. Um, and I really think about that with the library staff too. You know, that's one part that I can't stress enough because I always think, you know, our challenges are usually related to our facilities, mm -hmm. but what we have the best of is the library staff. We can't do any of the things that we do without them and um, they really are what keep our libraries thriving, yeah. On a personal note, I will just let you know, and it just hit me when you were talking about the library staff and how much they love their jobs and what they do. Mm -hmm. My oldest sister, Jude, her very first job out of high school was at the Somerville Public Library, oh, the Central Library. Really? Yeah. yeah. What it, was she? Jude, I don't know. I, you know, Jude didn't stay in it long, mm -hmm. but she was a uh, she was going to school for medical secretarial mm -hmm. work, and she was working there part time at mm -hmm. the library. Yeah. I always remember that because I was a little kid. There was a big age difference mm -hmm. between us, and I always remember going in and just kind of staring, and that would be my sister behind the counter. Isn't that just so amazing. Yeah. yeah. I love the personal connections we all have to libraries. I love that you can instantly go back and think about what libraries were like when you were a child and when you were younger. I have and, very fond memories. And that more way recently, too. I'm sorry, and more recently um, when I was doing the family history, the genealogy of my own family, mm -hmm. because our fa my mother's family has been here for, for over 170 years, going back into the Somerville room mm -hmm. in the main library and looking at some of the old books yeah. for poll taxes. Oh, and it's amazing. It's amazing the resources that we have right at our fingertips yeah. up there. I'm sorry, No, Kathy, that's okay. I don't even know if you noticed, but we um, also now have a, um, I'm going to forget the, I always forget. It's a, um, not Tumblr, it's another photo. Isn't this awful of me? I'm only the library director now, but. Our local history, our reference librarians, we're pulling, going through archives of photographs mm -hmm. and posting them online. Love and those. then we're also using those. Matt Howie like, probably loves those too. Oh yeah, he I mean, a, they're fantastic. Yeah. Um, so we have found some real gems that are things that you know would sit in drawers otherwise, and right. so it's great that we have the opportunity to share them. Does yeah. the library accept, um, I know it's a, it, it, when you guys accept gifts from the outside or from the public or corporations, you have to declare that, mm -hmm. and somebody has, does the library still take gifts of, mm -hmm. you know, maybe a collection of older books that are totally out of circulation for a mm -hmm. hundred years and are worth something? So for the most, we have a very active um, friends group, mm -hmm. and so the friends, they provide fundraising opportunities for the library. And then with the money that they generate, that pays for almost all of the programming that we offer at the library, and that's for programs for all ages. And they're the group that actually takes the donations. Mm -hmm. So we get donations on a daily basis. It, it's usually more, you know, you're moving out of your apartment, you're done with school, or maybe you've raised children and now you have a bunch of picture books and there's not really a place for them in your home. And so people will bring that by all the time. Those get sorted. Some of those things um, we do look at and think they would be nice additions to the collection. And then the things that remain are ones that will be sold at the book sale. Mm -hmm. And so one way or the other, they're a big um, help to the library. But, you know, of course people are always welcome to make donations, mm -hmm. um, to call and, and let us know if there's something that they're interested in giving. Always something in the back of my mind. What's the most valuable artifact that the Somerville Public Library oh has. Gosh, right this second? Sure. Because um, you do have you do have 
a so collection. It's up true. There. I don't know like a monetary value on a particular thing in our collection. Um, I know that we do have some rare books that are not available to the public. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what the monetary value, okay. but it's pretty significant. But I usually get attached to the more day-to-day -day things that I, I find are sure. kind of priceless. Like um, we'll find old like date due stamps. Um, right now there's a safe at the West Branch Library that's probably from the 20s and weighs like a million pounds mm -hmm. and we need to find a home for it. And you know, um, I, those to me are treasures. And so any way that we can hold on to bits and pieces of the history of the library, you know. I jumped a little bit. I, I'm sorry about that. I, you were talking about the future. So the future, future programming, mm. you know, the libraries in uh, the public libraries and municipalities today are trying to keep up with mm -hmm. the demand, the technological demand. Mm -hmm. Do you foresee a time when, and, and I always ask this question of people who work in industries that are rapidly going through change, mm. do you see a time when we will no longer need books? No. That everything will be digital, everything will be at our fingertips? No, huh? No, I don't. I mean, it continues to evolve, but there is still such a need for print. And you see it still in families, mm -hmm. you know, when you're raising readers. You can't beat the intimacy that comes with sharing a book with a child. And once that gets instilled, it's a thing that you're going to hold on to, and I think a thing that you're always going to want in your life. So, and I actually have noticed that um, with generations a little bit younger than me, they are still very interested in checking out books. And I, you know, it's almost like the vinyl craze, you know, when mm -hmm. records were a thing of the past because CDs. I came knew in. you were going to say that. And yeah. now people want records because right. there's an experience that you get that can't be beat. You can't get it some other way. And I still feel that way very much about print. What's yeah. everything old is new again. Well, that's right? true. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Speaking of little ones with books, um, I have to give a shout out to. Uh, the two little ones across the street from me, mm -hmm. they adore the library system. Mm. And Karina and Stu are constantly <laughs> at the library with their mom. Their Great. mom is a teacher. Yeah. They're not, they're not prohibited from using electronic devices, well, to a degree, right. they can use them. But it's amazing to me that they both have shown this proclivity to to gravitate towards print books mm. rather than a tablet or going online or mm -hmm. something. And Saturdays, that's their day, yeah. making a trip to the library. That is really good to hear. Um, and I've seen it actually firsthand. You know, kids are, they just seem so adept and resilient. And so they want to learn and they want to get engaged with whatever it is, the you know, you're sharing as a family. Mm -hmm. But honestly, I, the warmth that you get from sharing something in print, it, I mean, that's the point. It, you share it, you know, and I think that's the best way to start when you're becoming a reader. Winter time is my favorite time for reading. Mm. I will have to say at my age now, Kathy, everything is in big print. <laughs> so if I get that, but I was asking the question the other day. So, somebody asked me the question. They said, uh, the Somerville Public Library System seems to have come light years ahead over the, fa the past 10 years, mm -hmm. 15 years. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of that has to do with, as you were saying before, the staff. Mm -hmm. So I, one thing I did notice um, was Tim, um, Tim's collection, I Tim know, Devin's isn't collection. That yeah, explain a little bit, because we only sure. have about a minute left. But. Absolutely. So Tim has been with us maybe not quite two years yet. And he came Tim in, Devin. right? Yep. He came into the position with a deep knowledge about um, community advocacy and um, the importance of zines and conveying stories and learning. It was about activism, basically, mm -hmm. in the sixties and seventies. And zines 70s. are so zines are very their paper. Um, what do you want to call it? Like ephemera, essentially. Yeah. That's mostly self-produced. Um, that is really hard to hold on to and preserve because who kept a lot of these things? Right. And so very quickly into his time, he asked about starting a zine collection as a way to kind of capture what could be potentially lost history, mm -hmm. which of course is such a great idea. And he's worked really hard at it. We have gotten some great donations. Because he personally has an interest in it, he can 
hold on to new things. And then he, the other thing he does is he brings people together. And so That's I know the that they're doing an love. exhibit here, which yes, is wonderful. Yep. And um, he also will do walking tours just as an aside for right. something that he pursues and follows. It's like the perfect Somerville um, connection. And it fits so well with the library itself. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, so. yeah. I'm, I'm going to say it again. Congratulations, <laughs> Madam you. Director. Thank you. And I'm sure that you know anybody who's visited any one of our public library systems knows this face. <laughs> they know this woman from Somerville Neighborhood News. You do your regular segment down here with us. Yeah, you're so, so wonderful, by the way. Well, I, me, myself? Well, you're pretty great, yes. Thank you, Kathy. And also, we have a She's great... She's coming um, back anytime she wants to. We have a great relationship with the Somerville Media Center. Yes. We do a ton of work together. Um, like, Erica is always coming by. She's the reason why people are able to see Anne's story time. Mm -hmm. The movie night that's coming up at the library, that's in conjunction with the Somerville Media Center. So there's a ton of good stuff happening between both groups. So I can think of um, m maybe only a handful of organizations that fit so well with our mission down here, which is free speech. That's exactly democracy, right. Democracy and public. Yes. So I those feel three the same things way. go hand in hand with the library system yeah. and with the media center. Yeah. Empowering the community. In behalf of all of us, congratulations Thank again. You. It's not the last time you're going to be down here. Good. I, know I hope that. so. That's wonderful. Yeah. So I want to thank everybody for joining us. My guest has been Kathy Piantagini. How's that? Good. Thank you. <laughs> Kathy Piantagini of the Somerville Public Library. She is the new director. Stop up and say hello. As always, Thanks for joining us. Stay safe, stay informed. See you next time.